All right, we are here with Coach Ness from Maryland. Um, he is in our accelerator program. Uh, he just recently had uh, the best year uh, in his business. Coach, how, how much did you make this year? Uh, one hundred ninety-six thousand. Hundred and ninety-six thousand. Uh, and what did you do last year? The year before that, I had started in March. So I did about fifty-seven thousand that year. Fifty-seven thousand. Um, so fifty-seven thousand to one hundred ninety-six thousand. Correct. Yeah. Amazing. Um, now, let me ask you this question: When you first started your business, mm -hmm. did you did you think that was possible? One hundred ninety-six thousand in in one year when you first started training. Yeah, when I first I did, I mm -hmm. guess because I had worked at a like another kind of training company before, so I kind right. of saw the possibilities were. So I definitely knew that that was possible. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been in business? Um, this business so twenty twenty around the pandemic, so I'm going coming up on my third year. Third year, gotcha. What's the what's the biggest or what what have you learned since joining? Uh, Coach Ben's accelerator program from when you started. Like, what's the what was the biggest gap that you had in how to run your business? I mean, it's a few things honestly before getting with Ben, but I would say the biggest thing that he introduced me to back then was just having monthly payments as opposed to going session by session. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to more recently, he kind of introduced the idea instead of going monthly payments, doing like longer term as far as like three months, six months, twelve months. So those two steps are like the ones that made the biggest shift for me. Mm -hmm. And how have you, how have your clients been that have paid more upfront? How how have they been in terms of the program? Yeah, I mean they've been great because I mean obviously when you have more skin in the game and you put more money down upfront, you're going to be more committed to mm -hmm. the program. So definitely have had a great experience as far as that. And then there's also not the option because sometimes you might get a person that joins the monthly uh program. And like, they just might abruptly, you know what I mean? Just drop out. And it's like, there's no, no consistency or commitment with that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So there's, you can see a big difference between the monthly person and like, say the six month or yearly. Is that right? Yeah, overall, definitely. For sure. For sure. Gotcha. And when they are committed longer, do you think they're getting better results because they're in the program longer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the difference between being around for three months and being around for years, like it's, you know what I mean? You can see the difference clearly. And that's not to say that all of like the monthly clients have been mm -hmm. people that are like not committed. There's definitely some people that are on monthly that are committed and are consistent and have been around for a long time. So it's mm -hmm. not to say that, but it's just like overall, you see the trends. Right. For the, for the most part in general. Yeah, um, in general. Cool. And those people who were on monthly, they've been with you from the beginning and just haven't canceled is that why they're they're like they still get that yeah uh -huh, gotcha. uh -huh. and i guess maybe they like that flexibility of like not feeling like they're locked in whatever it is but whatever the reason right 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 so mm -hmm. what do you what are some of your goals now that you've reached that hundred and ninety six thousand dollars in one year what what are some of your goals for like 2023 for 2023 the goal i wrote down as far as just uh revenue wise i want to do like three hundred thousand, mm -hmm. hopefully so that's kind of, that's the big uh, financial goal as far as that. And then right. also just um, a couple other goals is like, I want to run a spring break camp that does right. really well. And I'm still kind of on the fence about what I'm going to do over the summer. I was helping out with another camp last year and it helped me get a lot of clients into my main program. So mm -hmm. I might do that or I might do my own camp thing. I'm kind of still trying to figure out how right. I'm going to approach that. Gotcha. And what's something the, uh, the accelerator program, like, what do you get out of that? That has helped you grow your business. I know, I know you said, you know, the, the longer term commitments, but like just on a day to day basis, like what are you getting out of the accelerator program that has like contributed to your, that huge jump from 57,000 to 196,000? Yeah. Cause I say two things. I mean, it's just the ability to just go in there and ask a question. If it's something where I'm like, man, what do I do? I just go on there type mm -hmm. in a question and I mean, have a couple of different perspectives, Ben's perspective, and then all the other coaches perspective. And there's bound to have been somebody that faced like the same, whatever, right. like the limit that you have. So you can just lean on that. And then the actual calls themselves go a long way. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really taking full advantage of the community until probably like last, this past summer of 2022. So like maybe July, August, that's when I kind of started really asking a lot of questions and coming to more of the calls. 
And that's mm-hmm. just made a huge difference because it's like, like I said, like you you can ask questions and it's not like you're by yourself. Right. And and you've taken, I've seen you, because I've seen you on the uh, the Zoom calls. Have those helped you too? When we have yeah, those, sure. those weekly for calls? Sure. When you the can Zoom get that one-on-one? Huge. Zoom calls are huge because it's like, sometimes it's like, even obviously asking questions helps too, but hearing somebody say it, hearing Ben, but no, just do it like this. And it's like, it's for whatever reason, I don't know if it's like human beings were stubborn, but mm-hmm. sometimes just hearing it makes it click even more. So it could have been something I already heard or right. like seen typed up in the community, but like hearing it in a one-on-one setting like that, it's like, that makes all the difference. Gotcha. Um, do you have, have you added assistant coaches to your program or is it just you? So yeah, I do have some guys that help me out for sure. Mm-hmm. how involved how involved like when did they start when did you start hiring people when did you realize you needed to hire other people um so pretty much um let me think I guess 20s I've had people help me here and there a lot of the times like my buddies I used to play with stuff like that so I mean almost since the start once like the sizes or like we started doing bigger clinics like pretty much always have people pitching in but as far as anybody really being like locked in and committed full time mm-hmm. uh not really all the way there. I do have one of my buddies that helps me out a lot. You know what I mean? But not, 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 I haven't, I can't say I've had like somebody that's like really like locked all the way in. Right, right, right. But you do, you have gotten to the point where you've grown enough where, hey, I, I need, you know, I need some other coaches um, yeah, because the sure. group, the group might be a little bit larger and you want everyone to get attention. Yeah. But what, I mean, what, I can do bigger groups, but then just for the sake of like, it looks better when there's more people walking mm-hmm. around, giving feedback, stuff like that. So, right. So, so. Gotcha. And are you looking to add like an expand? Um, are you looking to get more coaches and more kids into the program? Or are you kind of no, settled yeah, in? I'm, You're always looking to grow? Absolutely looking to grow for sure. For sure. Gotcha. Trying to be more aggressive with marketing this year. Mm-hmm. Like, and just really just try to take it to another level. What would you, what, if you had to give advice for somebody who was just starting out, like say it's a young kid, um, mm-hmm. just graduated college and he wants to be a, you know, a basketball skills coach or trainer, what, what would you say um, to him or her to get mm-hmm. them started or what advice would you have? Yeah. For them? I would say, you know, get with, if you're like in your hometown or home city or whatever, get with the coaches that you used to play for, whether it was like AAU, rec, or high school coach, middle school coach, and get with them. Try to, like, put some stuff together, maybe doing some free stuff for their teams, and then meet mm-hmm. parents that way, and just kind of, like, let it snowball from there. And then from there, even coaches that you didn't play for, like, reach out to them. So I would say the biggest thing is, like, trying to make connections and trying to meet other people that are in, like, the basketball sphere, wherever you are. Gotcha. And do you think, for somebody who does – I know you played you played college basketball, right? Mm-hmm. So for somebody who didn't play college basketball – and they're mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, I don't, I know like I'm not the greatest player, but like, I feel like I can teach the game. Would you say they could still be a, I don't know, their own private skills coach or, or trainer? Mm-hmm. Or would you would say, say? I mean, I would say, yeah, they could. I mean, I, as, as long as they like study the game, love the game, know what they're talking about. There's no reason why you can't teach the game. Cause especially right. if you're dealing with kids, all you have to do is like know more, know enough where you can teach somebody that's at a lower level than you. Like that's, that's what right. it is. So be a good teacher. Right. Plus you could be a really good player and be a terrible teacher. And it doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> right. I'm sure you might have some, you know, you might've seen some guys that you might've played with who are really, really good. And you're like, can you explain to me how you do that? And they're like, no, nah, man, I just do yeah. it. Right. <laughs> they don't know how to explain it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think that that was something that you've always had in terms of um, your ability to communicate with kids or was it something you had to develop? Like how how did your you how did you increase your ability to coach and was it natural that's a, or that's a good question I think personally I mean because I guess started coaching like working at camps like my, my high school maybe in like tenth grade and I, I think I was always decent at just like you know communicating with kids and like being able for them to like kind of you know trust me believe what I'm saying and stuff like that and obviously it gets better over time but I I would honestly say that I think I've always been pretty good at that and it's just over the years mm-hmm. I kept on doing it kept on doing it and I. I would say kind of that's how where it kind of comes from. Right. Gotcha. And do you think coaching, the coaching part is all you need to be successful, successful business, or do you need, or is there some other parts that you might need, need as well? Yeah. I mean, you definitely got to have, well, I mean the, the coaching part, I guess that's the backbone of it, but as mm-hmm. far as like the business part, sales, marketing, all that stuff kind of comes into play 
because people have to know about you and you have to be able to like convey what value that you bring. So I would say, I mean, coaching is obviously important. Like everything is important, really. Mm-hmm. Everything is important. There's nothing you can really leave out because if you're good at sales and marketing and then bad at coaching, then you're just going to always lose clients. So right, like, you right. can't have anything lacking as far as those three things, I would say. Right. And if you're really an outstanding coach, but nobody knows who the exactly. hell you are, you're not going to make any money, money, right? Exactly. Gotcha. What would you say to somebody who like they're maybe they're just getting out of college and they're thinking about like, Hey, I, I, you know, I got to get a, I got to get a nine to five job. I got to do what everyone else is doing. I, you know, I got this degree. I, you know, I got to make mm-hmm. my, my parents proud and just get a regular job. Um, what, what, what type of advice would you give them like motivational wise of like, Hey, is this, is this possible for people to do their mm-hmm. own thing? And you made basically $200,000. Mm-hmm. Like what, what would you, what would you say to them? They're like, I don't know whether I should get a real job, real job. I mean, this is a real job, but real job or do my own thing. Mm-hmm. Well, who's the type of person that this is for? I mean, I would say, um, like just from based off of my experience, like having a real job is not like, it can't stop you from doing this. So if, right. let's say you get a real job and then you do this maybe on the weekends or in the evenings, then you build it up to a point where you feel comfortable leaving your real job. Then, mm-hmm now you're in a good spot like whatever point that is whether it's like once you equal your income from your regular job and that that's what that's when i decided to step away once like the training income was the same as my regular job i was like okay i feel comfortable doing this you know what i mean like it's just kind of kind of proven i can do it so i would say do but like i mean if you really feel like obviously you just study for hard for four years you got your degree i mean use it and like you'll get a guaranteed paycheck and then you can build up your stuff on the side. And that way you can put more money into marketing, more money into stuff. And then when it's time to go, you can go. Like whether that time, whenever that time comes. So I, that, that's kind of what I would say as far as that. Right. And is it is the is this business for somebody who kind of wants to clock in, clock out and get definite money? Or do you think it's somebody who has to have like that determination? Like, hey, I'm going to do what it takes. Yeah, you definitely have to have determination because right. especially starting off early when you don't have any momentum, it's like you have to create that momentum. You have to like mm-hmm. be on the phone, calling coaches, like trying to connect with parents, like going to games, all of that stuff. That stuff doesn't, nobody's going to just hand that to you. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to just like give you clients. Like you have to really be right. resourceful, be determined, all of that stuff. So it's not like, it's definitely different than working a regular job for sure. You have to have that kind of like just wake up how can I get this thing moving? So I would definitely say you have to have something in you that's pushing you. Right. It's not, it's not for the, for the lazy person who doesn't, who doesn't want to work. It's for the guy who wants to put in the effort, right? Yeah, for sure. You have to put in effort, like for sure. Right. Working at what people, what people really don't understand is like uh, working that nine to five job is a lot easier than doing your, their own, your own thing. And it's, it, it's a lot more pressure doing your own thing. But mm-hmm. the re- the re- the re- risk is higher, but the reward is higher. Exactly. Correct. Like what what were right. you doing? What were you doing before? I don't think we ever talked about this. What were you doing before basketball? Your basketball business. Oh, so, I was a scientist. I was working in labs and stuff like that. Scientist. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so that and I did that till July 2021, and it was just a situation where I wasn't a super big fan of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And. But I, I wasn't ready to just like leave until like my business got to a certain point. I just kind of knew. I didn't know when exactly it was going to be that I was going to stop. But I kind of knew. I was like, I mean, this thing is moving in the right direction. So it has to be soon. Like, you know what I mean? And just using my Saturdays, using my evenings and just right. building, 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 building. And it got to that point. So, so it got out. to the, like you said before, it got to the point where you were, you matched your, your salary at your. Yeah. At your and I job. also, I had another, I have another business that was going on as well. So I felt even extra comfortable just because like, so it was, I was, and I was getting too busy. That was the other thing. So I had uh work, regular work, like basketball training and the other business going on as well. And I was like, man, like something's got to give, like, this is like too much. That was also part of the decision. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like, I wasn't just going to stop working. And I, it's not like I just had the basketball thing. I had something else going on as well. So that uh kind of aided in that decision too. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. What's something else that you learned in the accelerator program um, that you you weren't doing when you first started? Um, I guess another thing that I picked up was the fact that so you can obviously like send emails. Like I say, you have a clinic, send emails out. 
But this mm. is just the idea of calling each like person that's in your program, right? Asking them, hey, do you want to come to this clinic? Hey, do you want to come to this clinic? Like physically doing that. I, I thought just sending out an email was enough. And clearly it wasn't because when you do that, maybe one, two people sign up or nobody signs up because, I mean, people, they might see it and want to sign up, but it's like they have a hundred other things going on. So it's like, mm-hmm. who knows if they're going to come back to it or if they're going to remember it. It's just the act of actually calling them and being like, hey, and that will kind of put it more on your radar. So that's a big, big thing that helped me kind of with my clinics a lot. Right. And when when did you join um, the Accelerator program? So it would have been January of 2021. January of 2021. Yeah. So, okay. And the year before that, you said 57,000? No, 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 no. So, so let me break it down. So January 2021, I joined the program. And then March, I had everything set up. So the end of March, made my first sale with the program, like uh, kind of following, like having gotcha, a sample. Gotcha, gotcha, and gotcha. like that. And then, so from March until December, I made 57000 And then from March to March 22, I made, I want to say like 92000 Wow. And then, yeah, so that's kind of how it started off. Gotcha. It was in the program, at least. Right. Would you say uh, it was a good investment in yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Would you, uh, would you recommend sure. it to somebody who's, who's starting out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it, it just answered, it plugged a whole bunch of holes that were like in like my right. operation. Because I was doing stuff. I wasn't really tracking the money super well, too. I mean, Sam mm-hmm. Car makes it super easy. But like the year before, so before uh, January 2021, I was making some money doing it. I couldn't really tell you, tell you how much it was. I just right. knew it was like extra money coming in and it was cool. But I was like, man, like it's not like, you know what I mean, consistent enough. Like it was just mm-hmm. certain things that I probably wouldn't have figured out for years or maybe ever, who knows, right. without having jumped in the program. So it just, yeah. Was it a, a worthwhile investment? Absolutely. Right. So it, fat, it, it sped everything, all your knowledge up that you didn't have to mess up anymore on your own right yeah yeah you exactly. could have messed it up for another five years doing the same thing what were you doing collecting like cash and stuff uh i was doing a lot of Venmos, not necessarily Venmo. cash a lot of Venmo, cash app stuff like that no like, yeah that was kind of right. how i was operating just random payments and no yeah. no terms if they didn't show up they didn't pay yeah. things like that stuff like that exactly gotcha. so and then i'm trying to think and then let's say somebody came every week every saturday Mm-hmm. I'll be looking at my Venmos to see, okay, that's for this. Side. Like, you know what I mean? Trying to match up. Did they pay this week? Right. It's like tedious trying to go through all your payments. And it's just like, it's just not an efficient way. Like there's no way I would have grown to like this size if that's how I was still operating. Right. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Um, so coach Ness, I appreciate you being here. Um, that's all the time we have. If you're watching this video and you want to connect, you can text me at 732-908-23. One five, and we'll see you guys next time.